So in video 2213, we made this thing, which is a diaphragm piston. I did it stand alone because it has so many uses. And if you haven't seen that video, shame on you. Jump over and watch it. I've put a link at the end of this video. But it's going to be based on this. So what we're going to do is make an engine out of it. And the engine isn't your everyday engine. It has two unique features. One is the diaphragm piston. And here is the engine base. And the other unique feature is this thing here. What this is, is a valve. Any piston's going to move if you put pressure behind it. You can use compressed air, you can use water, you can use fuel that explodes and creates pressure. Anything will move, which is great, but what we wanted to do is go back to the start and then move again. And the valve controls that, and it's actually really simple. What you can see here are two tubes, and they're both straight the way through coming from the air intake and outtake to the piston itself. Here we've got another tube that intersects them, and it intersects them using this. This is just a cylinder with a hole in it, and the hole is at a diagonal entering there and exiting there. When we put that in that chamber, it allows air to go from here to here, or fuel, or water, and then it rotates, stops it, and then moves to that position so now the air, fuel, water can come back out again and that's the job of a valve. A valve controls the in and out of whatever pressure you're applying and the same is true of any engine, a steam engine, a Stirling engine, a petrol engine, whatever it is, the valves control that fuel and that's the heart of being able to make a piston go back and move again and make it reciprocating. You don't often see these, you often see slide valves. Slide valves are exactly the same thing, but they move backwards and forwards. This one works because it goes in the chamber and it's connected directly to the drive. We'll see that when it actually is built. And as the drive moves one full turn, it's a one-to-one -one ratio with a gear, and that will move one full turn. Doing that swap over, as the drive section moves, and of course the drive section is connected to the piston. We're going to build it in a second, but first let's have a look at the Tinkercad drawing of all the parts laid out. You might notice there are surprisingly few parts. Now I'm going to of course put these onto Thingiverse, including the parts of the diaphragm piston, although that is a separate thing on Thingiverse if you just want the piston. But the parts are so low because most of the work is being done with this thing, the base. It contains the valve, and there's very little else to the engine but the valve, the crankshaft, and the piston. The piston's pre-built, the valve goes in here, the crankshaft goes in here. So all you really have to do is put together the crankshaft. Now you're going to need, in addition, two skater bearings. These are 22mm by 7mm by 8mm, and they take the crankshaft. One of the important things to note about some of this stuff is the direction that it's printed, because there's a crankshaft that's printed as one whole piece, but you need to print it in that orientation. Resist the temptation to print it that way. And the reason is, all the stressors are going to be in turning it. If you print it that way, that's where the weak point is in the grain of the print, and it'll actually break. And the same is true here of this pin. This pin connects the crankshaft to the actual piston and it's printed that way so that you can withstand those shear forces. Okay, let's put this together. To put it together, all we really do is slide on the bearings and you'll find a couple of three millimeter spaces. They slide on next and you'll need to glue them into place. On this side, we slide on the wheel, and on this side, we take this cog. This cog has an indentation mark right there, and it's also got a little tooth in it right there. And the tooth will line up with the channel there in the crankshaft. And the reason for that is that's where we get the timing from. So if we slide that on there, we have finished our crankshaft build. And the crankshaft will drop right in there. When you've dropped that in there, then we take these cap pieces and fix them on there. The cap pieces have a little bit of a lip on them and the lip faces inwards. Like that. 
When you've done that, just check that the whole thing rotates freely. Now on this is another notch. When we put the valve in there, we need to line those two notches up because those are the timing marks. So those two little holes are lined up. What that means is that when this does one full turn, the valve will do one full turn and swap between opening and closing. Once that's done, we can put that wheel on. And that's the crankshaft and valve all built and made and all turning nice and freely. On the other side of the valve, we need this big flat washer. That goes on there. And then there's two clips, one small, one large. Take the larger clip and the clip clips that washer in place. So that it's like that. And again, we can check that it's nice and free moving and in fact, the valve is working. Now we have to fit the crank arm and it fits right there on that bit of the crank. That goes on there like that. A spot of glue on there to hold that on there, being careful not to glue it to the crankshaft so that as it moves, it's free to spin. And now we can glue the piston in place and it goes there. And then the crank arm slides in the piston there and that pin slides in to hold the whole thing together. Now that was the original top, but remember it's meant to be generic and of course that would be a bit of a pain. So what I've created is this top here where the pipes fit right onto there like that and feed into the air hoses here to direct the air in and out of the cylinder. And all we do is slot those on and glue them in place. And that's it finished and put together. And quite a beautiful machine if you ask me. Now I've also added this, which is an air inlet hose. It doesn't actually matter which one it goes in because it's symmetrical. So you stick it in whichever one you like. And of course, what we need to do now is feed it with something and get this to turn, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So I also created this. It's an adapter for my vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner goes in there and the air inlet goes in there because it'll work whether you have air pressure behind it or a vacuum behind it. And I don't have an air compressor, but I do have a vacuum cleaner. Now I suspect these are fairly standard, but if they're not, you can create this yourself quite easily. It's just a couple of stacked cylinders and this diameter here is 34 millimeters. Just change that to whatever you've got. But that's what we're going to use. Okay, so I've set it up. I've stuck it down here so it doesn't move. I've gaffer taped my vacuum cleaner at the table top so that when we turn it on, it doesn't move. Now the vacuum cleaner will be incredibly noisy. We'll turn it on, give it a start, and then we'll give it a close-up. Okay, that's awesome. Maybe. So that really was quite awesome and you might have noticed a couple of things. First thing is it's very much dirtier than it was before and that's because when the vacuum cleaner was on it, it actually pulled the rubber glove off the piston so I had to glue the top of the rubber glove to the piston and then I had to apply more graphite to it to lubricate it. And I did it both inside and outside. And of course that meant the graphite got absolutely everywhere. The other thing is I may have made a rod for my own back. I, I did think this was very cute, particularly how it was attached here, but the rotary piston, and uh, rotary valve, sorry, obviously introduces an area of pressure loss. Again, it's, it was a pain to make that. Lots of sanding, lots of fitting, and then I lubricated it again with graphite. Maybe I would have been better off if I'd just used a simple slide valve, but I couldn't resist the rotary valve. Anyway, this is on Thingiverse, like I say. If you feel like having a play with it, then feel, feel free. If you feel like making some changes, like slide valve instead of rotary valve, please do. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.